amphibious jet boat build. In this episode, we're going to be trying to put this motor inside the amphibious jet boat. The intake that I made in the last episode is bolted in, so I'm going to drill through and bolt it through the bottom of the hull now. All right, that intake's bolted in, and I've got the shaft in. The jet unit's bolted in there too. It's a bit of a tight fit. The bottom looks perfect though, how the intake's gonna be, which is just great. Might take out that center stringer. But we have a problem. I think when uh, the swing arm comes down for the rear wheels, this is gonna hit. Let's try it. Okay, that piece of uh, box section is touching there. The wheels have actually come down a fair bit. I could almost drive like that, but I do want it to be a bit higher, just so you can get over obstacles a lot better, because it's quite long. So I could probably get away with just taking a big notch out of it, which is great. I mean, it can't steer when it's down like that, but the wheels are only ever gonna be up when it's steering, so that's good news. We've got the motor sitting in here, but we need to get the drive from here to here. That's sort of where I wanted to have the motor, but I'm unfortunately going to have to move it further forward, I think, because you can't have too much angle. You can't bring this up any higher, the motor won't sit any lower. I could tip it back a bit, but I don't know if I should really run it like that, so pretty much the only option is to move that way further forward. I think the motor's going to sit probably about there. I've got a bunch of old uh, four-wheeler universals and CVs that I'm going to make the drive shaft for. So I think I've got a plan. Weld this to there, then this can be the drive shaft here. This big CV will plug into here. This came with the jet unit. It's the same spine as that. I've got to figure out a way of joining that to that. Okay, will that little weld hold 90 horsepower? I hope so. Now, I'm going to weld this piece onto here. This piece is aluminium and it steels in there, so I've got to reach in there to weld. So there we go, drive shafts tacked in there. Something else that might be a problem is we've got a universal here and then a CV joint here. I don't know if they can work together because you're supposed to sync these up and I don't know if you get a bit of an imbalance going on but look how loose this piece of the coupling is. That's the standard jet ski one so I don't know if that's alright or not. I might have to fix that. So the motor's going to go there. If I tip it over a little bit that straightens that joint out heaps more, so I might run the motor, it's hard to see, but slightly crooked like that. And then the drive will come off here for the rear wheels. So I need to drive this to drive the rear wheels. I don't know if you can see that spinning. When the wheels are up, I have to disengage it. Chain sprocket, that disengages somehow, and then also probably need reverse too, so how am I going to do this? Okay, I've got this old lawnmower diff here. I've got an idea pretty cool. So I'll run a sprocket there, a chain will go back to the jet drive, which will turn this. So in neutral mode, this will stay still, this will just spin away. Then for drive mode, a sleeve will slide across and engage the sprocket. So the whole lot will spin the same. Then for reverse mode, I just need to ram a plate in here or something to stop this. And then it goes backwards. Does that make sense? Neutral, this spins twice the speed of this. There'll be no load on it, it'll just be that spinning. Then in drive mode, this will lock off. The whole lot spins. Then reverse mode, that locks off. One goes backwards, one goes forwards. So there's my forward neutral reverse. But this is only made to handle like 15 horsepower, not 90. So she might just blow apart. <laughs> Even though it, go, it is going through the um, four-wheeler rear end, so it's geared down, 
but if I blow it, I can end up using a car one with the same method later. Okay, I've got one uh, engine mount sitting in there. I'm going to make a frame out of this 25 by 50 RHS, but I've only got one piece. So I need to get some more from work tomorrow. And it's pouring with rain, so I'm going to have to come back to this later. So here I am in at work with all the safety get up on, welding this gearbox up, just centralizing that pipe on the plate there, tack her up, put her in the rotator, and uh, spin her up, weld it. This rotator just uses a hydraulic motor to spin it. You can change the speed. So after welding that up, I put in the lathe, put the center drill through it, and then a 19 mil drill, so it'll slide over the shaft. Slowly machine the outside, which is a bit chattery. And then I make a spigot for the sprocket to sit on. Oh, that was a burp. Uh, now I'm quickly putting this other piece in here. It only just holds in the lathe, so I've got to drill through. And I think I put a 24 mil drill through on the end. And then I mark it with a lathe and take it over to the linisher so I can machine it like rounder quicker. And don't have to deal with the chattering. Put her in, put the live center back in. Machine that off, it goes much smoother than it did last time. Then I face off the front face of it, which I don't really need to, just for looks. And then I put the other side tool in so I can machine the back side, which I'll need to do, you'll see later. And then press the spline piece into that one and I'll weld that up at home with a TIG welder. All right, we're back at home. It's late, but I love that shed life. These are the parts with the diff in the middle. I've taken the sprocket off since last time you fellas saw it. So that's just slipped inside there. I came up with a way of not having uh, the diff blow to pieces. So this piece that slides over top of here will have some like dogs that engage over this piece. So I just slide it back to disengage, slide over so all the power runs through the outside of this pipe and it doesn't go through the diff. That way I can do full throttle launches without having any diff malfunction. Need to put a spigot on here to weld that on, but it's hard to put in the lathe and I'm at home and I want to get it done, so let's go. Got my DTI set up here. I've got to play the game of tack each side to try and keep this drive shaft square. Still a fair bit out. I'll keep working at it. Okay, I've been strategically welding this to shift the position of the shaft as it pulls or tips over. Some of you will know that, some won't. And I've actually got it going pretty dang sweet. It's not a hugest weld in the world, but this weld will only be engaged when it's going in reverse. The outer casing will take all the load for forward. So this dog system's welder on there. Something will go in and jam up on those bolts to stop the center. And that'll just slide over and lock in. It's a bit tight at the moment, but it's sunny outside. So I'll go do some stuff outside for a bit. Okay, I've got these engine mounts cut and in place. So this side and this side, I need to uh, put a framework in to support the whole thing. I'll probably tie into this engine mount as well and go over to the side. Cleaned out all the rubbish out of the inside because it was driving me nuts.
Although this front wheel setup works pretty well, it's just not going to be stable enough with this sort of power in here. Also the whole thing uh, flexes. Don't know if you can see that on the GoPro. I have got an idea for uh, putting four wheels on. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.